Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm here with Rabbi Yisrael Dovid Weiss. He supports Palestinians, and I'm going to ask him why that's so. Rabbi, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Thank you, um, and it's an honor, a privilege to be on your program. No, it's wonderful to talk to you. So tell me, Rabbi, why do you oppose the state of Israel, first of all, and why do you support Palestinians? Okay, uh, first I pray to the Almighty that He bestow upon me His truth, His wisdom, that I may be worthy of conveying His message and so sanctify His name. Uh, I, it's, it's not my personal opinion. What I'm representing, with God's help, is the opinion of uh, the very religious Jews around the world, mm -hmm. including in Al-Quds in, in Jerusalem, including, um, well, throughout Europe and throughout the world, basically. Uh, we, as a Jewish people, have made a covenant with God 3,000 years ago on Mount Sinai, Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses went up and took the Torah from God and made, we made a covenant to uphold the Torah. That is what Judaism is all about, mm -hmm. to uphold this covenant, to be close to the Almighty, to be subservient to the Almighty. Uh, this movement, the concept of creating a state uh, sovereignty and what they want to call a Jewish sovereignty, that concept, that was, is a movement that started around 150 years ago. It is a transformation from subservience to God into nationalism. Hmm. Have a piece of land uh, to be a nation amongst nations, to be comparable to all the great countries. Now, that in and of itself, even if it would have not affected the Palestinian people, the inhabitants, the indigenous people, in other words, if the land would have been uninhabited, it would still be forbidden for the Jewish people to have this concept of sovereignty, of a, a, a nationalism. Hmm. Uh, because we have a long history. We made the covenant with God 3,000 years ago to uphold the Torah, and we were then commanded to go into the Holy Land and, uh, and build a temple, which King Solomon built a temple. But we were... Uh, warned by the Almighty and instructed by the Almighty that we have to be in a very high level of spirituality. If not, then we will be driven from the land. And that came around 2,000 years ago. Uh, the Romans and the, and the Greeks, they, they, drew, they came, they invaded the Holy Land and the Jews were driven from the land as a nation. Once that happened, we were put under a decree of exile. And so for 2,000 years, we're under a decree of exile by the Almighty, meaning that we are told by the Almighty that it, it is His will that we should not be the sovereign nation. It, we should be loyal citizens in every country we're residing. And we should not attempt to return en masse as a large group of people or try to recreate and even one small one inch, one centimeter of, of a Jewish sovereignty. Because it is like medicine from God to break our haughtiness, that's what we believe. Mm -hmm. So there is actually three, we were put under three oaths and that King Solomon who built the temple had wrote a book of prophecies called Shir Ashir, Song of Songs. And he speaks about these three oaths that God put us under. One is that we should not return en masse to the Holy Land once we were dispersed amongst the nations. Secondly, we are not to rebel against any nation. We have to be loyal citizens in every country we reside. A Canadian citizen has to pray for the well-being of the country. Even if you're not happy, or let's say uh, throughout a history, Jews were many times forbidden to buy land and they were taxed to a, a yeah. much higher degree. Still in all, we have to be loyal citizens and not rebel against that country. Thirdly, we are not to make any attempt to end exile. Why? Because it's because of our sins we are out, spread out. God is compassionate. And the Almighty, when the time will come, which every Jew yearns for, that the time will eventually come, with the Almighty will make a metaphysical change in the world and all humanity will recognize one God, then God will return us and God himself will build, rebuild the temple without any human intervention. Uh, there will be a spirit, uh, like a miraculous spirit in the world that will stop being atheists and so forth. Everybody will believe in God. It says, all the nations will 
hold hands and mm -hmm. join to serve God. That will happen. Then we will return and we will become close to God again in his heart. That so is how, what, how, how does that come about? Like, how would you know that, that we're well, in that, that state? We will know that because, like I said, there will be a spirit of holiness, of godliness. There will be a spirit of people returning. The Messiah. See, obviously, the Jewish and Muslim people have a distinctly different concept of what the Messiah is, Mashiach. But we believe, but that's, uh, that's uh, uh, really uh, neither here nor there because because what will happen, it will happen. And we were never deemed a threat for the Muslim people because of the difference of our approach, because we are clearly, as I've mentioned, we are forbidden to make any attempts to return. Mm -hmm. We just believe and we pray to God constantly that he should bring about this end day uh, and when all humanity will serve him. So uh, we yearn to return. Mm -hmm. We yearn with all our hearts. We say it in our every day in our prayers that we want. But we, are, we, but we haven't for 2,000 years. We uh, patiently wait and we serve God, upholding the Torah, the covenant, in every land where we are, being all citizens and so forth. Zionism was created by mostly non-religious Jews. It was a nationalist movement of people who, uh, who uh, estranged themselves from God, from the Torah. They were non-religious. I always like to carry around the picture of uh, the, the first, this was the Declaration of Independence, the first Prime Minister, David Ben-Gurion. And they're making a so-called Jewish state in 1948. Yes. And so it's Jewish. Supposedly they're doing us, they're returning to God. They're mm -hmm. saying it's the end of exile. And not one of them is covering their heads. Hmm. You know, so you see what the... the falseness of it mm -hmm. but still in all the Zionists they 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 put on a facade and they uh, of Judaism they uh, incorporated religion in order that the world should say oh it's a religious thing we have to support them the evangelistic Christians and the millions and millions support them uh, n Jews who don't know the Torah well unfortunately the more non-religious and the, they say oh and they have this emotional uh, of, uh, playing, uh, the, you know, that, oh, it's returning 2,000 years, we're in exile. That's the difference between Judaism and Zionism. Now, so in other words, in short, and very concisely, Judaism is subservience to God, Zionism is nationalism, and it's expressly forbidden for us. So around the world, around, no matter what community, if you go to Argentina, you go to England, uh, Stanford Hills in London, New York, where we're from, the, the, the very religious community, and in Jerusalem, um, the very religious community is in total opposition to the creation of the state. And, um, and now we ha I have to add something very important. In other words, for us to have a state, as I said, would be even in an uninhabited land. But being that they created this state in a land that they, they, they needed for their purpose in, in Palestine. But Palestine was an inhabited land. The majority were Muslims. The second group of people that lived there in, in numbers were the, were the Christians. And the third were the Jews. Because as individuals, we were allowed to, by God, were permitted to live there, but not as a nation. So the, in order for them to create their state, they had to uh, expel at least on the best of the, 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 the Palestinian people. That is, it's against, the, it flies in the face of what our Torah is about, because in the Torah it says, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. We, we have to be, mahu rachum, afatate rachum, just as God is compassionate, we have to be compassionate. I mean, and certainly not to steal or kill and, and, and expel people. How dare they? And, uh, and on top of that, we have to remember that in this 2,000 years of exile that we've suffered, so much because we are Jews. Uh, the Jews were burnt at the stake. They were tried. They were tried. They tried to forcefully convert Jews in the, in the, by the Crusades, by the Inquisition, and where did they, they were expelled from Spain, from Italy. From, where did the Jews go? The Muslim lands took in the Jews. They embraced us in mm -hmm. every Muslim land. Uh, Iran, um, uh, wherever you'd like, Palestine was under the Ottoman um, Empire. They took us in and we flourished in their lands. There was no human rights groups to protect us, yet we flourished. It wasn't necessary human rights. So now to the, for the Zionists to come along and accuse the Muslims of an ingrained hate to Jews or the Palestinian people, an ingrained hate, how dare they, how repugnant, how, uh, in, in, in where we have to show, the Torah requires us to show gratitude for people and to go and turn that on its head and say, these people wronged us. There's, all of this is the most uh, criminal part of this, what we, the Arab and Muslim and the Palestinian people would call the Nakba. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a picture here even, you can see how we used to live together. 
and we babysat each other's children. We lived in total peace. This kind of, so the, 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 that is why the very religious around the world, we stand in total support. We hurt, we cry with the Palestinians. We are humiliated because the Zionists took our religion and they're using it as a tool to occupy, to intimidate, to silence other people because if you speak up against them, you're called anti-Semitic. So we, 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 the religious communities uh, stand in opposition. Mm -hmm. how, yeah. how do you oppose the Zionist movement? Well, the first thing is we believe, we, first of all, we, we do not accept it. We do not part, part, participate with them. We have the very religious communities doesn't, uh, does not serve in the army, certainly not. Um, the, they, uh, they, they don't go voting. They have nothing to do with the state. We have a rabbinate there. The Zionists made a rabbinate all for this facade. Well, they masquerade in Jews, so they made a rabbinate with a chief rabbi. And this is all by us irrelevant. We have a rabbi. We had in the 1940, uh, in 1920s, the chief rabbi of the religious community that was living there for hundreds of years was Rabbi Zonenfeld. And he met with the king of Transjordan in 1920s, that's way before the state, to declare our loyalty and that we don't want to stay. He, he passed on in 1947, 1948, the chief rabbi was Rabbi Dushinsky. The Zionists then were very well turning to, out to be very successful in having the United Nations, the Britain through Britain, to, the, to get uh, recognized. So Rabbi Zon, Rabbi Zonnefeld, uh, Rabbi Dushinsky, a blessed memory. This is the records of the United Nations in 1947. A declaration before the United Nations. He said, "We furthermore wish to express our definite opposition." to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. This is the very religious, representing the religious Jewish community, says we don't want a Jewish state. And these people are imposters, the one are doing it. And the history is, when he passed on, we took a next, you can see hundreds of thousands of people in the streets of Jerusalem, taking up our next chief rabbi when he passed on. Mm -hmm. we, we have hundreds of thousands of Jews living there now under this Eid al this God-fearing community that does not recognize uh, the authority of the state of Israel. They, in fact, they demonstrate daily. What they demonstrate, and they you see children get. Uh, we never carry arms. We're not militant. They get beaten. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. Old men get assassinated. Rabbis. This is. It's unbelievable. You can go to our site, NKUSA, and see. And, and the world is silent. They don't even talk about the fact that Jews daily are demonstrating against the occupation. Mm -hmm. And the, and and it's. It's just it's it's it's, it's it screams to the to the skies what what is happening the injustice to the Palestinian people and to the Jewish people who are living there who refuses to accept this authority. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Rabbi, do you do you ally yourself with other Jews who are not Orthodox who oppose the state of Israel? Oh, that is a very good question. We, um, being that there was the Reform Movement like 250 years ago, and our rabbis at that time issued a fatwa. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, um, uh, two uh, hundred of the leading rabbis of Europe, when they said this is a, a heresy, it's a rebellion against God. You can't reform God's Torah. They don't eat kosher. They don't keep the Ten Commandments. They don't keep the Shabbos, the Sabbath. So they said we're not to be affiliated with them. So we we work with the Muslim people. We work with the Palestinian people, and they'll come to the same demonstrations. But we won't have joint activities directly. But if they're there, we you know we just but we, uh, they do a lot of them. You know, a lot of people who are Jewish, who are non-religious, they have, they feel it's human rights or because even other Jewish reasons that they'll stand up in opposition. There's many really tens and tens of thousands or more who are opposing the occupation. But we are coming from the core issue that the Zionists are claiming the legitimacy. We are telling them, telling the world that they're conning the world. It's un unacceptable. So we're coming from the religious state. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, this is a picture of a girl behind bars, uh, every boy and girl who turns 17 becomes a criminal be from the religious community because they refuse to serve in the army, in the IDF, which is mandatory military service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so these are all very, very critical issues. We, we, why is it so critical for people to understand? Because people, the, the, what, they're very wily, they're very efficient in what they do, the Zionists, and they, they, li they like to refer to themselves as a Jewish state. They insist they to be referred as a Jewish state. Why? Because then they know that if anybody wants to oppose what they're doing, criminal to the Palestinian people, they're taking their homes, they're stealing, they're killing, they're doing so many uh, terrible crimes, 
But if you say words, oh, you're speaking against a godly religion, so, and you're attacked as being anti-Semitic, and now they just made here, they're making a new law, they're trying to pass the I, um, uh, IHRA, I think, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's going to say that if you speak up against Zionism or the state of Israel, it's anti-Semitic. What could be more ludicrous and what, what could be more uh, unacceptable mm -hmm. than such a concept when the very religious communities are being oppressed and insisting we are Jews. My grandparents were killed in Auschwitz. I come, most of our communities are immigrants from, uh, from, from Europe. We died because we were Jews, because we insisted on remaining this religion, the, our covenant to God. And we did not accept that because we suffered that, therefore, we're going to turn around and occupy another people. That's a, we, we, we suffered and now we should go sin against God that we gave our lives for by stealing and killing and doing against God's will. And so we are, we're against the Zionism and we are being oppressed. The ones of the Jewish people who, didn't, who found a home in Palestine and were living there, these immigrants, and they were living there, they tried to catch the breath from so much suffering. All of a sudden, they, were, they, they enjoyed being under the authority of the Ottoman Empire. And all of a sudden, they're thrown under the Zionist control and told that if you stand up and oppose this rebellion against God, you are thrown into prison, you are a criminal. How does the world take the authority to, to dictate in our religion what it's, instead of respecting our scholars, our, which you have here in Canada, if you have in the United States, we have our community, um, let's say in New York, it's the largest concentration of religious Jews where, where mm, I yes. lived in, right across from Manhattan, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, miles and miles, and there's not one single Israeli flag. Our, the chief rabbi of Palestine, Rabbi Teitelbaum, moved there, and, um, and uh, these distinguished communities thriving, uh, illustrious communities with great scholars and uh, and pious people and um, and businessmen and they all insist that we are a religion to serve God and God forbid that we should accept uh, uh, the occupation mm -hmm. and now if somebody we decide to speak up against this rebellion against God in the name of my religion and and call out to the world that they're imposters, they're using my religion, that we should be, and, and people who are standing together with us should be accused of being anti-Semitic. That is unjust, it's unacceptable, and we decry that. And that's what we do with the, for the power, we try with God's mm -hmm. help. We, we pray to God that he should bring a speedy and peaceful dismantlement of the state. At the same time, we go to the United Nations, we go with Palestinian people to cry their, their, their hurt, to speak, go to the demonstrations, to try to educate. We go to universities, to colleges, to uh, uh, con conferences, and to tell uh, to the politicians we to, to, uh, to have them change their approach and not to support the oppression of the Palestinian people. Rabbi, thank you for sharing with us today. We really appreciate it. I learned so much, and uh, I'm honored that you came and joined us today. I'd love to do again whenever we can expand on all the different issues and our history of how we live together yes. in, in harmony and uh, in, in, so, in such a beautiful uh, uh, to serve God and it, it, distinctly, you know, we have different uh, religions, but it was never an impediment. You're of, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's so much to talk about. So much. There is. The, yes. Fact. So one day we'll continue with God's help. Inshallah. You say Inshallah too, right? Inshallah. We say in in in, 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 in Mir Hashem with God's help. Mm -hmm. But I say Inshallah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today.